Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Good morning, everybody. You know what? I'm starting off with this picture of me with my gray, well, my salt and pepper hair, I like to call it, because during COVID lockdown, I decided that I got sick and tired of dyeing my hair and I was just going to let it go gray and that's exactly what I did. But I recently came across a picture of me back before I turned gray. I think I look basically the same. Of course, my husband would like me to go back to dyeing my hair and I said, absolutely not. <laughs> Those days are past me. All right. Today is really, there's a lot about Sophie. We have a few other stories and of course we're covering Harry and Meghan, but our main focus today really is Sophie. So let's just jump in and get there, shall we? Let's go. All right, to start with the Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Catherine took over Radio 1 Newsbeat for um, mental health awareness, which I think is very nice. So Newsbeat welcomed them in to their live lounge and they chatted to four guests about their experiences. And one of them was a young mental health advocate who recently advised writers on the TV soap opera East Enders about schizophrenia. Apparently that's one of their storylines. The show is going to air on Tuesday. Way to go. All right. Now some of these pictures I showed you yesterday, but now more information has come out so now i really want to follow what sophie's doing right now okay so we know she's going to visit botswana and malawi to mark world site day because she's an ambassador for international agency for the prevention of blindness um but she finished up her she's you know continuing on with her african trip today with botswana so her first stop was at the, I hope I'm saying this correctly, the Molifi Primary School in Kopang. And while she was there, she met children who have benefited from treatments that the trust was involved in, including the Pono Yami School Eye Health Program, which is a program that aims to identify and treat vision problems in young people. Sophie met the Minister of Health, Grace. Muzila, who you saw her shaking hands with earlier today. She also spoke with some of the children who have benefited from this program that they've got going on. She spoke with um, several children who received eye care through the scheme or through, you know, the stuff that they've got set up as well, which I think is very nice. And one of the things she did while she was there was she gave glasses, eyeglasses to children who had participated in the health program. And the kids, I'm sure, were very thankful to receive the glasses. And they Everybody just looked like they were having a really good time. I just think it's wonderful. Now, we already know that, you know, um, Sophie was the first royal to visit the Democratic Republic of the Congo last week, ahead of the trip to Botswana today. Um, she just looks like she's enjoying her work, which, you know, we know she loves to do this. Now, while Sophie was there at the school, at the Molifi Primary School, she was treated to a performance by members of a traditional troupe called Gatalatoa. I hope I'm saying that correctly. They put on a show for Sophie as well as a lot of the government ministers that were there today. It looked like Everybody had a great time. It looked like the whole thing was a great success. I have to tell you guys, I feel and I still feel like Sophie is their secret undercover weapon because everybody likes Sophie because she's so personable. And as long as they keep sending her out to do these things, I think it's going to go just fine for everybody. So when this ended, she went and changed clothes and went to a, I hope I'm saying this right, a Chevening and Commonwealth Scholars and Commonwealth Points of Light reception at the Westminster House residence of the British High Commissioner in Gaborone. Right. And this reception was to show the accomplishments of young people from across the family of nations, including athletes who recently took part in the Commonwealth Games. Now, that reception took place after Sophie met with the president of the Republic of Botswana. I'm going to try this again. 
Makwitsi Masisis. I uh, hope I said that correctly. Of course, she had to sign the book to show she had been there. I think she looks lovely, and I think so far, this part of her trip has been a great success. All right, then she went and changed clothes. And the reason she changed clothes is because she had to go to a dinner reception at the Baroni International Convention Center. She met the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Lemongang Kwap, I think is how you say that, as well as other ministers and dignitaries. She looked absolutely glamorous in that pink dress. And, um... Yeah, her traditional updo. I just loved her. Anyway, she was seated next to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Lemongang Kwape. And, of course, he addressed the room and gave a friendly speech during the um, event. And the entire reception was held in the honor of Sophie's visit to Botswana. I think that's very nice. Just something I want to throw out really quick. Sophie is visiting these countries in her capacity as the global ambassador for the International Agency for the Prevention of Blindness because ending avoidable blindness is a cause for her. Um, she's been doing this for over 20 years. She was vice patron of the Queen Elizabeth Diamond Jubilee Trust, which was set up in 2012 to work against avoidable blindness. And this is her first visit to Botswana to see the legacy of the trust. Very nice. All right, let's move on. All right, I'm just throwing this article in there because they're saying that Harry and Meghan's California mansion has been described as a humble cottage. Now, remember, they said that Frogmore Cottage, which was only 5,000 square feet, was so small they could barely stand up. And the house they're living in now has nine bedrooms and 16 bathrooms. And supposedly, it's too small and they're cramped. And so now they're looking for a new house so that, you know, they can spread out because they're so put upon in this little humble cottage uh-huh all right i had to throw this in here he thinks harry thinks that um you know putting this out is somehow setting himself free from the royal family but does he realize that once he's free from the royal family there's no way back i pretty much think there's no way back at this point anyway and there definitely will be nowhere no way back once the uh memoir is released i think we all know that too here we go. Megan Kelly said that uh, Megan Markle is a social climber and that Harry is thin skinned. And uh, when it comes to their public image, whether they matter, what people write about them and whether they're being adequately, quote unquote, protected by those around them and the maintenance of these images that they believe that they have. Oh, my goodness. Now, Megyn Kelly had interviewed Tom Bauer, um, and Tom Bauer had said that, um, you know, Megan was essentially hunting for a man. She wanted wealth, she wanted fame, and she targeted Harry. And uh, yeah, she also wants to control the narrative. And they pointed out that anyone who gets in her way is ghosted and attacked. And Harry has become hypersensitive, hates the media, but wants approval from the media by going on Spotify, Netflix, and Apple TV. And that the contradictions and the hypocrisy are normal. Uh, just enormous. Kelly said she was absolutely shocked that Harry would emerge as sensitive to what's being said and written about him because Megan's whole thing is about image. So I can see why she's easily upset about the bad press, but not Harry. Bauer pointed out that um, <laughs> he said Harry's not very smart, essentially, and he's foolishly blaming the media for the death of his mother. He said that um, it's complete nonsense. He loves the adulation. He loved it when he's being praised, especially when he was in a soldier. And um, now he's embittered about the way they were treated about the funeral. He's not allowed to salute to the queen. He's not allowed to wear his military uniform. They're on the back benches and um, their children are, are not getting the titles. And that's what this whole thing is actually about. All right, moving on. All right, people are now speculating about Harry and Meghan's finances. And as I told you before, I believe they're running out of money because 
they've run into unexpected problems, okay? They really need to bring in money if they want to survive in the States. They have a ton of staff manning Archwell Profit Foundation and the production arm. They frequently fly private. They they have staff running their house, right? She's Her husband's been completely cut off. Harry's been completely cut off. And um, they're pushing the limits of their fame. They're falling short. Nobody wants to hire them to do anything else. They haven't delivered on the Spotify podcast. They haven't delivered on the Netflix content. Um, yeah, they're in trouble financially. <laughs> I think we all know that at this point. I mean, if you think about it, they had like 30 million and they plopped like 11 million down on the house. So that left them with like, what, 19 million? It sounds like so much, but when you consider that they need 2 million a year for security and they need 2 million a year for PR and they need money for this and money, yeah, they're going to run short. And now the stories are coming out that Harry and Meghan want out of all of their deals, but only Charles can get them out of their deals. Now, do we know why? Well, they got a lot of money when they made those deals, didn't they? Now, it's being reported that Meghan was literally caught off guard when she realized Prince Harry was not independently wealthy. Um because she's money obsessed and always has been. And so she was very disappointed to dis, you know, discover that Harry had very little money of his own, only like 30 million. She thought he'd be worth hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions. And of course, that's not the case. The reports are Harry cashed in on an advance of 17.5 million pounds for a smir- first memoir. And while they signed the $100 million deal with Netflix, they have yet to receive all of that money. And they're saying that the two of them are worth about approximately $60 million, but they cannot afford the cancellation of the projects. Therefore, cue Daddy Bucks Charles. Do I think Charles is going to step up and do that? No, because in order to do that, he would have to agree to let Harry and Meghan come back to the royal fold and do royal duties. And Meghan doesn't want to do that. So here's my thought process. He could help Harry get out of the deals. He could pay off Meghan and split them up. And Harry can fight for his kids and go back to the UK with the kids so that they're not raised by a crazy narcissistic mother. But, you know, I think the UK might might be willing to take Harry back, but no way in God's green earth are they ever going to accept Meghan back. All right, you guys, the stories are starting to come out that Meghan is really getting tired of Harry because he's so freaking needy. I could totally see that. It would be like having a third child in the house, you know, that you constantly have to take care of. It's crazy. I mean, they've pointed out that Harry is like constantly clinging to Meghan like a lifeboat. So, you know, they've got a lot of stress, right? They're shouldering three to four point seven million in security bills a year. They're responsible for maintaining a 15 million dollar mortgage on a 16 room mansion. They're financing all these bills through the Netflix and Spotify and random uh, Penguin Random House deals. But, you know, two two years later, they haven't released anything on Netflix. Uh, the Spotify deal is no longer the two of them. It's just Megan. Seems like a lot of this stuff is no longer Harry. It's just Megan. The, the, you know, the magazine covers are just Megan. The, the speeches are just Megan. You know, she used Harry to get where she is. And now Harry doesn't have any more usefulness. There's the whole family side of it. Harry's missing his brother. He's missing his dad. Um... You know, the only family member of Megan's that's stepped up to take the place of Harry's family is Megan's mother. So they have money stress, career stress, legal stress, family stress. Um, you know, they're constantly suing everybody. That's a lot of weight to carry in a marriage. Um, you know, uh, these two are very good at playing victim, but at some point, it's it's going down the drain. I think we all know it's going down the drain. Megan now is carrying everything with her podcast. She's carrying everything with her speeches. She's carrying everything. Harry's just along for the ride. And I think she's getting tired of it. So, I mean, if she had any brains at all at this point, she would negotiate some sort of a settlement with Charles and say, Liz, I'll give you back your son. Give me whatever and give me and we're done here. You know what I mean? She would be so much better off, I honestly believe. Not to mention the fact that she got Harry to admit that he has 
um, mental issues, that he drinks too much, that he has a, a drug problem, that he has an anger management problem. She set him up perfectly for divorce. Yeah, she did. All right, ladies and gents, it's Finn update time. I got up this morning. I'm working on my videos. I look around. He's nowhere to be found. He's usually right under my feet. So, of course, I went looking for him, and here's what I found. Watch this. Did I catch you sleeping? Oh, little buddy. Hi. He's a tailor wagon. With a tailor wagon. He's sleepy. All right, you stay in sleep, okay? You be a good boy. Mommy loves you. All right, you guys. I really want to know what you think about the stories coming out that Megan is sick of Harry and at the same time they want out of their deals and they're looking to Charles to help them. I just thought that was a real kicker. But you know I want your comments so leave them below. Now I'm putting up this picture again of my Patreon. 55 people have joined us. Thank you to those people. Um, the Hawaii trip is almost over and then we're going to be moving on to the dieting and the house and the other items. And I hope you you guys will want to join us in this private group it's really nice so don't forget to leave your comments below don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be notified of uploads don't forget you can follow me on twitter getter rumble you can email me for the patreon and for all of those other items everything is listed in the description box there's all links there to get to everything okay for those of you who have donated to my coffee fund thank you so much for those of you who have donated through the thanks button thank you so much and as always you guys have a great day